So John, I was wondering if you'd take a few minutes and just share with us a little bit about Sunday security. So I know you've been involved with them and I know you're excited about their approach. Can you just tell us a little bit about the company and your involvement and what, what you think are their prospects for the future? Yeah, I, I met Sunday um, through some friends in the cybersecurity space that really know their way around. And, you know, I, I, I operate, as you know, from certain theses. You know, I have a, a th thesis that AI and machine learning is going to exhaust its benefit after we get through optimization. So high performance computing is going to come back and chips are going to become way more important and less commoditized. And, you know, more of those are going to be manufactured in the U.S. So you, you kind of look for something, you say, that really fits with, with where I'm thinking about it. And we talked earlier about the landscape of cyber shifting dramatically. And so one of the things that's always been troublesome to me as an executive, and even as um, a family uh, around the executive, and then as an investor, and that is one of the most vulnerable attack surfaces is people's private lives and their family. And so, you know, I liken it to, you know, we can all read stories about how a Facebook post or a Twitter tweet have cost people reputational risk, you know, because of loose, loose choice of words or letting something come in out of context. Well, we also have promiscuous computing habits at times you know, around those sorts of platforms. And so what used to evolve from, hey, let me social my social engineer my way into a system and try to, you know, lift a check for $10,000 out of this company has now become really advanced. And as you taught me, persistent and threatening. That's why they call it an advanced persistent threat because these are really smart people who are willing to take a very long period of time with the right target to build um, an, uh, an opportunity. And the biggest vulnerability that's not been covered is around the personal lives of executives and their families where they don't have an IT department supervising them, making their change their passwords and picking a good password and all that. So I felt like, you know, that was something that someone needed to think about. And you can go back on the landscape the last decade, we've tried to do it with you know, one SIM and, and two sets of apps and, you know, different um, uh, protocols and permissions. And then we tried it with two phones. You know, we, we've all carried two phones for a while, right? And then we put the two together and then we tried to, so we've been at this problem in various forms for a decade. So it's not new news, but I do think the idea of moving up the stack from the physical phone, the network, the, the uh, passwords, policies, and permissions to, you know, getting world-class surveillance and the kinds of things that a head of state um, would get and bring that down to an affordable level. Like that's, that's real. It's magic. And when you look at the team, you know, the team has a history of doing this. They have the qualifications to do it. They have a really good architecture to do it and they have a scalable approach. And so if you look at, at that and say, okay, you know, how does that work? I think it works really well. I think there's a really great need. And the uncertainties will play out just like every company adapting. You know, does it come first for an iPhone or an iPad and is it an Android? And how much do you charge for it? And um, Saatchi and team will figure that stuff out. I just am really excited that it's the, uh, a need in the market and it's an approach that's new put those two together and that's the sort of magic that can converts innovation into a commercial success. So I'm, I'm op really optimistic about uh, Sunday and what we're going to be doing. 